Hello my love monkeys. Now I did say that it would be best to demonstrate the broadcast band a stop band uh, attenuation when it was uh, dark. So here I am in the hours of darkness. Uh, let's see now. Uh, best thing I think we can do is to run two receivers in this instance. Uh, set the radio up and uh, get ourselves down into the broadcast band region, so let's have a look. Um, okay, and same with this one. Okay, let's have a look. Alright, I think what we'll do initially is find ourselves two extremely strong signals. That looks like one. Yeah, it's uh, pretty strong, isn't it? Minus 28, minus 29 dBm. And uh, another one closer to top band, I think, to demonstrate uh, attenuation but not complete and total removal. So I think what we'll do is look for the strongest one we can find as close to top band as possible. Uh, I would guess that probably qualifies. Okay. Um, you'll only hear audio from one receiver, I think, in this particular configuration. Uh, I can't um, record from both sound cards at the same time. So, uh, there we go. That's got comparative filter widths so that uh, we've got equivalent um, bandwidth for the signal strength. Right, so we have, what's that, minus, roughly minus 28, 29 dBm, um, and up closer to the top band, down here, the bottom signal meter, uh, is for RX2, uh, and that's minus 44 dBm. Uh, so, if I plonk the pre-selector into circuit, as you can see, the uh, station which is closest to top band has been attenuated significantly. Not completely removed, but we've been getting there. And as per the other video, uh, all we've got left up here are switch mode power supply, spurs and noise and whatnot. Uh, let's just do a measurement then, shall we? On RX2, we've got ourselves a signal of mm, minus minus 44 switch that in minus 84, 85 40 to 41 dB of attenuation um, at a frequency which is what, you know, a couple of hundred kilohertz below uh, top band and of course uh, complete and total obliteration of the signal that's a little bit further down. So if uh, if I sweep up through until we start seeing some broadcast, I think probably that one there is most likely the weakest one. And put it back in. Oh, might be one just there, perhaps. Difficult to tell for sure, but uh, anyway, nonetheless, as you can see, the uh, the uh, the stop band broadcast stop band attenuation is significant, to say the very least. Um, and uh, just to show that I'm not cheating, the preselector is currently uh, tracking the radio by cat. So if I put uh, um, the preselector in and take us actually into amateur band there you can see the pre-selector is tracking uh, I just want to demonstrate that um, the the pre-selector, I'm, I'm not doing any magic here or anything like that I'm not uh, pulling out plugs that you can't see etc uh, we're genuinely
There we go. Genuinely just uh, switching the pre-select in and out. So there you can see with the pre-selector in circuit on top band the uh, uh, low frequency high Q uh, gives us a fairly sharp um, uh, peak in the response as one would expect uh, which um, falls away as you increase in frequency and uh, the broadcast band of course is, uh, is completely obliterated out of the equation from the, uh, from the radio so there you have it anyway ladies and gentlemen um, that's uh, the effectiveness of the broadcast stop band um, so just a quick video to demonstrate that really uh, at a time when the, uh, the uh, low frequency and mid frequency uh, stations are peaking or doing a jolly fine uh, uh, example of trying to anyway so thank you very much hope this has been helpful 7-3s, good luck G7CNF signing clear.